Hey everybody, welcome back out to the shop. I'm Jimmy J. And I am Jimmy Jimmy. <laughs> I'm just, Jimmy Jimmy. Just Jimmy. We got a small project we picked up the other day on the marketplace mm -hmm. out in the shop. Uh, if you guys seen our other videos, if you haven't, check it out. But oh, we have a... Yeah, oh, the particular video we can throw yeah. up there. Yeah, we have a 1977 C-Ray SRV 220 that um, we've been doing a bunch of stuff to. It's an older boat, but in really good shape. And we were on the marketplace and found another outdrive for it. We don't need one right now, but we figured out the price we got it for. Let's pick it up and have an extra parts or something. So, Yeah, so we'll show you guys that real quick. Uh, here are a few things we're going to need for what we're going to do. We're going to do this video in two parts. We're going to do the more of the mechanical checkover part where we're going to drain the lower end fluid. We're going to change the impeller. We're going to check the prop seals, all that stuff. And then the second part is going to be stripping it down, cleaning it up and painting it. Painting. Here are a few things we're going to need. Tell uh, them what we need. So we got ourselves an anoid, uh, anoid, anode, anode kit right here. This is the aluminum anode kit. Of course you can get the magnesium and the, what's the other one? There's another one for different kinds of water, but we're in fresh water right now. But this will do brackish, salt, and fresh, so we're good with that. Got ourselves a drain plug in case we need one. Yep. You never know. There's Got ourselves out. an impeller. Yep, the impeller kit with the housing. I mean, because this is normally just what a lot of people replace, but we bought the whole housing and everything. We don't know what the what it's like in there, so we're going to have it all new. It's a marketplace buy. You never know what you're going to get. Exactly. And then we have primer. Uh, the paint is on its way, so just the base primer. And when you're then, using primer, though, remember, self-etching primer because you're painting aluminum. What he said. <laughs> and then we have some green, which you're going to use for the what? The, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go color. different. I'm going to paint the prop like this bright green, he, gloss neon. You guys don't know this, but he really enjoys, like, neon green colors. I mean, we have, like, water bottles. He makes decals neon green. I don't know if you guys have seen We got the nut cups back there are green. Yeah. Those and my tool card, everything. So I figured it'd be different. It's underwater anyway, but it'd be pretty. You only see it like a little bit at a time. But right? like you said, the paint is on, it's ordered, but it's taking a while for that one. And we have uh, this Tef gel, which is awesome to use when you're doing anything with aluminum because you're using stainless screws and steel screws and then you get that galvanic corrosion and they almost seize themselves in there. You put some of this on there, it seals it. You won't have that problem. I wish I would have had that like on the on my truck <laughs> I know. the tires i had to knock those tires our trucks are there. are friggin aluminum so anything you put into them you're gonna have that problem well i think that sums up base what we yeah. have here as i said we're just missing the paint so uh we can hop on over to the bench and uh, give them a little mechanical breakdown yeah let's do that all right guys here we are at the outdrive um this like we said this is the mr1 it goes from 72 to 83 uh you can tell because it has the four by four and a half by four and a half cap with the eye the eye hole this is a, kind of a smaller eye hole than our other one, but anyone with an eye hole will fit that year. Uh, I think the also the lower unit on this one will also, and the lower unit on the, what have we got, alphas? Alpha one will also fit on the upper parts of this if you needed to do that. But overall, it's pretty good. The U-joint, uh, we were checking them out. The U-joints are pretty good. There's no play in them. There's no binding. So that's good. Uh, this one happened to come with a prop, so what we paid for is about what the props were, so can't beat that. We're going to take that off, like I said, paint that. Overall, though, pretty decent shape. What do you think? I mean, I'm I'm liking it. How much did you pay for this bugger? I only paid 50 bucks for this. That's it. See, guys, it pays to check the marketplace. <laughs> like I said, we don't need it right now, but having that backup piece just in case, because they might be hard to come by, because it is, it is an older boat. So we just want to have one lined up. For us. So first thing we're going to do is get down here, pop that drain plug, and see what the oil looks like in the lower end. All right, down here. We're down here, guys. On this one side. Oh, I say you guys a lot, don't I? Yeah. People of YouTube. On this side is the drain plug. A lot of times they're hard to come out. Uh, we we'll hope this one ain't. That's why we bought a drain plug just in case they get rounded off. So we got somebody holding this down for us. A little man. Oh, that one easier than I thought was going to. So bonus there, right? You sure you didn't loosen that previous? I didn't loosen that previous. <laughs> Well, excuse you. <laughs> the oil, the oil looks pretty good. I don't see water in it or anything. 
And this is one of them fluids I hate to smell of really bad, and I got all over me. <laughs> yeah. I hate to smell he, of gear he oil. He doesn't like gear oil. To me, it doesn't bother me. What is what bothers me? Is it mineral spirits? Yeah, mineral spirits. That, that, that drives me crazy. I can't do it. <sighs> but that looked good. There was no water in it. So, good sign. Means I don't probably have to mess with any a whole new seal kit for this. Just the uh, seals that for the bottom end. So, we're going to finish letting that drain. And then we're going to go up top. Pop the, Let's pop the vent up there. Maybe it'll drain a little better. Yeah, see, now it comes out of there a little better. Let that finish drain. We're going to put all new in there anyway. So, we're going to be taking the prop off. So, if you want to go a little bit lower so they can see it this does have a little uh, lock in here so we don't have it locked right now but these will be just pressed into this so you just can bend them out that way it can free loosen so that way when you actually loosen this it doesn't get caught size wise for this we have an inch and a sixteenth uh would you say this is brass yeah yep. the nut is brass you gotta be careful yeah so nut. as i bang it <laughs> you only hit this prop the shaft yeah, so we're just going to loosen this off here. Try to use a six-point socket if you can. Yeah. You might need somebody to hold your prop, but ours is up against the wood, so it's going to hold itself there. As long as I don't overly torque. It's not overly. It, has, it wasn't tight, so. I'm just glad it came with one. That's nice. Another one added. We're going to have to check the pitch on that prop. Oh, yeah. True. See if it's different than the ones we already have. There you go. You can see it's a locking type nut. Got the green nylock in the front. Nylocking. Make sure you place these to the side so you don't lose them. Nice to put them in like a home. Oh, get you a nut cup. A neon green nut cup. Neon green. Be yep, take that off. There we go. Our prop should slide off there. Yeah. Boom. Nice. Looks pretty good. Not you want to check this rubber here because that's what separates your prop from the, the mounting thing. Make sure that ain't ripped up or dry rotted. Looks pretty nice. Can we see the read the pitch on that? Uh, anywhere. It's usually right along one of these areas. We're gonna have to clean it off to figure it out. Yeah, I'm gonna have to give it a wipe. I'm not seeing anything really. Yeah, it's probably too much yeah. powder coat on it or something. Oh uh, yeah. Well we'll we'll look. So once we get it cleaned off we'll be able to see what the pitch is, but pretty cool. So now that we got this prop off, we were looking a little bit closer in here, and if you guys can see, I'll try to get you. It looks like a little bit of oil at the bottom, which is usually not a good sign. <laughs> um, we'll have to see what, what kind of oil, engine oil or gear oil, because the only thing this has in it is gear oil. So if it smells like gear oil, not good, we'll probably have to do seals. But, but if it's like engine oil? Yeah, it's engine oil. Well, yeah, because uh, exhaust comes out, comes out of down here, so I guess if the person's engine, engine was, was yeah it was like running crappy and actually throwing oil out of the exhaust i guess that so, could be a reason we'll check that out so now we're going to be separating the lower unit from the upper unit this is a uh, pretty easy there's six well i say nuts what is there five nuts one bolt there's, uh five bolts yeah five nuts one bolt so i'll show you guys here right in here's one on the other side it has one same spot, boop, right there. Uh, the anode, uh, anode would be a bolt, bolt that yeah. goes right in there, but ours is missing right now, so it's already out. And then there would be a nut right here, but our nut's missing. So on your particular one, if you're doing yours and it's got everything, just make sure you get all of those nuts slash bolts off. Oh yeah, let me let me snag those. Oh, try to get you guys. Boop. Yep. Right there, there. There's two more right at the bottom. So let's get uh, taking those off. All right. One thing too, when you guys are separating this, you might want to put something on the floor. It could drip some oils. Be careful. And there's some seals when you take it apart. So let's get going. All right, guys. We have all of the uh, the four nuts that we have off here, and as we said, we, we're missing a bolt there and we're missing a nut here. So we're technically ready to just lift off here, so I'm just gonna have you. We're not worried about this because that kit we showed you in the beginning comes with the bolt and the anode, so we're good there. Well, that's easy enough. And uh, let me move this camera, give you guys a closer look. 
Uh, while he's wiping, I just want to mention that there's a little seal right there. Just make sure you don't lose that if you're trying to clean up this. Um, other than that, how's it looking in here? Not... It's pretty good. These things are pretty simple. I mean, you can turn your shaft on there. Everything seems like it's turning smooth. I don't hear any binding or anything. It turns a little easier than it should. I think that tells that impeller's a little messed up, but everything looks pretty good. We're going to take this out. I mean, we got a new one. We might as well. Yeah. This one looks like it got a little hot. See how it's a little melty? So it might have, yeah, see, look at this. It's even yeah, it, melted. So it, it got, got warm. pretty hot in there. Somebody ran it dry or something. All right, well, uh, let's set the camera up and change we'll this yeah, we'll bugger that. out. Could have been a uh, little bit of a problem. A little bit of a pain in the angle side side. Can't get them all for Nick, you got a pick? They're like stuck there a little bit. Oh, that one's coming out. Really, that one. There you go. I got this one too. Yeah. Right. I got it. Thank you though. Oh, flat blade, please. Oh, I got one here. Let me try this one. Yeah. Roached for yeah. sure. Look yeah. Look at that thing. Oh my god, it's not existent. That is not doing too good. And as we said, you can see that this thing got hot and melted part of the casing and started bubbling. Yeah, and then once we actually went in there, you can tell <laughs> this thing got scorched. Yeah, it's done so. Oh yeah, that's an oh look, it's like falling apart. Oh yeah. It's not good. Well, good thing we're replacing it, right? Yeah, anytime you get one of these you should replace it anyway. Alright. Um, just a little side note for you guys too. There's a little bit of hardware in here. This little piece will rest right right there. Yeah, that's flat. a key. Yeah, so just make sure you don't lose that or drop it in there. So just set it to the side somewhere. Uh, that keeps your yeah. impeller, your rubber impeller in place. You can hold it on there when you go to put it back on with a little bit of grease. Uh, check your parts. Make sure they look the same. So far, our housings, they look the same so far. So that's good. And that's the upper piece. Yeah. And we're gonna pull this lower piece off. And then we got this gasket. Which this kit comes with gaskets, so. Yep, so it's gaskets and all the seals. That one's gonna be a pain, it's kinda of stuck. Just on that pin right there. There we go. It's broken anyway. Put it the way it was. So. And then that should what come out? It's supposed to. But it's, gotta, it, it got hot, so who knows if it'll actually move. It might have to pry that one up a little bit. It's moving, but not easy. Get some underneath there, maybe. All right. <laughs> to the toolbox. Get where to oh, it's moving. I got it moving right here. Boom. Oh, good. You'll see it comes with the kit. See this, the gasket's already on this piece. You want it comes with that one. There's that small one here we told you about, and then the gasket's on the bottom of this. He's pulling that off now. Gear oil. <laughs> oh, I hate this all that. I'm good to go. I don't know, Gary was my uh, kryptonite, I guess. Oh, 
Okay, pretty good. Overall, overall, it looks fairly decent. I mean, a little cobwebs on that one part, but that's not part of the it's pump. Hanging out. The bearings in there look good. They're rolling nice. Yep. I don't feel any flat spots. So I think what we need to do is just clean this out, get it ready for the new one. And then start uh, placing those seals and all that goody good, good stuff. Um, to get that seal out of there, we're just going to use a pick, not a, one with a little hook or anything. And then uh, that'll pull right up out of there. Uh, then if you have some, uh, if you're working on with these, you can have some of that, um, what's that, bellows adhesive. You put a little in there to help hold that in place when you put it together, because you definitely don't want that coming out. And you'll definitely have water in your, your oil. Where's the pickies? It should be an individual orange handled one right there. I was looking for a box. Yep, it's engaging the it's engaging the gears when I move that, so that's golden. And I have the seal out of here, so I'm gonna set this to the side very carefully. Just use this time to clean anything up. Check everything over, check your bearings, all your other seals. Make sure everything's looking good, which this looks, considering it was bent apart, everything looks all right. And that end pillar was definitely shot, but got overheated. They drew, ran that dry for sure. Just cleaning that surface. All right, we're inspecting the top half of this also, and we noticed, if you can see down in there, you'll see this, uh, this piece right here. Looks like that got hot also, so we unbolted that. We're gonna take that out. And you look down in there, you can see there's just a like a gasket. It just goes into the opening top part for cooling. So let's see, show you what that looks like. You can see where that got hot. The plastic is all melted here. Yeah, and it it's all bubbly. Doesn't look like it's in good condition. So we're gonna order one of those. So that should be all we need for this top end piece. Once I mean this would still work, but if you got it apart, it's all yeah, and you're you're changing all the other stuff. Why not change it all? So we can go over there and do the uh, the impeller part, but uh, we'll have to get this out in our order tonight. Also, these seals on here look decent, but I, I believe the kit might have come with those. I think, yeah, I think I saw them in there. If not, then uh, we'll order those too. But like I said, everything else looks good on this end. We took the, some of the seals out of the bag here. We're trying to lay everything out so we get in the order. But this bottom piece that you have here, it doesn't have the seal on it already, so make sure you grab it out of the bag and put it on here before you start placing stuff. Yeah, put your O-ring on there, and then give it a little bit of assembly lube or something before you put it down in. So we still got to put the, uh, the gasket on there. A little, little loose. We have some engine assembly lube. We're just going to use that right now. Okay, we're good there. Slide in there a little easier without tearing your your seal. Okay. And place this this piece down. You'll see it. I think it's pretty much the only one in the kit. Yeah. There. We'll slide that over the shaft. Slide it down. Don't rip it. So do it evenly. There you go. Next, you're going to slide your bottom part of the. The pump in there. Dry impeller. It'll be a tight fit. It's a rubber boot. Oh, we can lube that up a little bit too. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. That was a bit tight. Do some nice assembly loop. See that? Fit in good. I don't know if you guys can see that right here is that that sh that cutout in the shaft that where that pin or that uh, key goes. That's we're just gonna use a little assembly lube to hold it in place. Give you, you guys the a in. little close up there so you can actually see it. Yeah, you got the cutout, the flat spot. That's where your key's gonna go on there. 
We're going to use assembly lube or grease to hold it in place. All right, guys. So now we're going to put the impeller into the water pump housing. Yep, so, yeah, so first thing he's going to do there is put a little bit of lube in that housing so we can put that uh, impeller in there a little bit easier. And we're just using some engine assembly lube. You don't need a lot, really, just some in there to spread around. Now, while he's doing that, uh, this impeller does go in a certain direction, so just make sure you do this proper. It goes in counterclockwise, which I'll show you there in a second. If you go in the wrong direction, it will, uh, I don't even know if it'll actually work. It might burn itself out. It might, it, sh it might flip over, it might not, but you don't have a chance that. So you can go by the one you took out of yours if there's anything to to see. But since this one's, uh, see, like ours, there was nothing to see. So yeah. you're not you're not able to tell. But when you, you're just going to hold this in your hand, put it in here, and then spin, push and spin counterclockwise. all the fins are all facing the right same way and then as you can see it's it's slightly off a little so you want to make sure you're lined up with your hole in there and then on your shaft you guys can't really see it that well but there's a flat piece where the key goes and there's a notch you guys see that there's a notch in the uh, inside oh there it is you guys can see it there's a notch there that's for the key so you want to try to line that up with whatever direction you're facing your key. I like to do mine at the uh, bolt closest to me. So that's what I'm going to do. There you go. Mine is faced towards the bolt where it's just going to drop down on. So that's set and ready to go. Next thing we got to do is put the gaskets on and the wear plate. All right, guys, we're ready to put our gaskets on in our wear plate. As you can see, I have them laid out in order they go. We're going to put this one on the bottom first. It pretty much only goes one way. Just be careful you put it down evenly so you don't rip the, the gasket. Uh, next to your wear plate, you'll know which way that goes on, up or down, because there's a little protruded part that goes down. So make sure that's pointing down. Next is the top gasket, pretty much the same as the bottom. Set that on there. Next, we're going to put a little grease on this flat part, part on the shaft just to hold our key in place. So, get some of the all purpose grease. Just put a little on there. No need much. Then, you're going to take your key right here and you're going to put it just set it flat on that shaft right in the center of it the grease will hold it there for you and that's the key that's going to slide in that groove on your impeller so you want to make sure that's where it goes so let's set it down on there if you line it up right it'll just it'll go right down There we go. A little bit of an angle, I have to say. Yeah, we just had to spin the key around so the key was more on this side instead of there and went on a little bit smoother. Appears to have caught it, so that's good. There we go. Now we'll just put the bolts on there and tighten them. There probably is a torque spec. We don't have that. I want Ooga Booga. Ooga Dooga? Ooga Dooga Dooga. So we're going to put the washers on first. Then you can start the nuts. And then there's one bolt for the washer. That's the only one that goes in the front there. This here? Yeah, this is for the small ones. This is, uh, what size is this one? This one was a 7 16 for your small ones, and the rear one's going to be a half inch, I believe. Which is that one. Yeah, I was talking about the small so ones. Right. We're not going to tighten it with the power ratchet, we're just going to get them, bring up the distance, then we'll tighten it by hand. 
And we're gonna go crisscross from each other. done now the next thing we have to do there's a there's a guide tube that goes in here and then there's a brass tube if you're just redoing yours you'll have it there but if not since this one's uh, new to us this one was missing the brass tube which we did purchase we did purchase the kit with the brass tube and this is that piece that goes up in the upper part which we told you guys about we had to order it came in so we'll go over there and put that on here uh, in a second we're gonna put that guide tube in real quick here all right, here's our guide tube. That's just gonna go right in here because there's like a rubber boot in there. That's where the brass is gonna go, but this is the guide tube. Just sits in there like that. It'll rest right in top. So we're done here for now. We'll go over to the top piece and get that, that piece replaced that was bad for us. All right, guys, so here we are inside the top part. You can see right here, this is the part where that upper piece goes. We're just gonna set it there with the new gasket. While you're in here also, cleaning this surface and drying it off, uh, over here, is, there's a seal. You want to make sure that seal's in good condition, the rubber's good, ours looks pretty good. So there shouldn't be any issue with that. Just wipe it off. So that looks pretty nice there. Just clean off your surface here where the gasket's going to go. If there's any big pieces on there. Ours came off pretty nice. So it wasn't bad, we just got a couple small pieces. Now we're going to get the new gasket. You can see that here. It doesn't go any particular way, just set it on there. So we're going to set it there and get it in place. It's the easiest thing here. There we are. That kind of sits in place there, doesn't it? Yep. Trying to focus this for you guys as good as we can, but uh, yeah, not that easy. Okay, here's that new piece for the top. Just going to set it in there. Again, only goes one way. You'll see the cutout here, which goes towards that front piece right there. And then it does come with four new stainless bolts. You're gonna wanna use those. So we might be blocking you trying to get this in here, but. At least you know the essence of what's gotta go on. Yeah, I'm blocking them for sure. All right, everybody. So we tried using the little man's hands to line it up through this little uh, holy right here so you can get to it, but it's still a pain to put them in there. So what we did was we got some forceps that we got from Harbor Freight. Yeah, pretty these, these yeah. long ones here yeah well, these these are nice they lock too so you can hold the yeah bolt. so i just locked onto the bolt pushed it down there and then pushed it into place and then i just got the extension with the socket and just hand tightened it so now he's just tightened up the four real quick again probably don't know the torque specs so don't go crazy yeah this if you're doing it like this and you need it it's called the cover assembly it comes with the gasket, new bolts, the pipe, the copper pipe, and the top cover assembly. We'll leave links to them in the description. Here you go, that piece is done. We're gonna start uh, placing some of these seals because we don't want to forget those. There's one seal that goes right up here, and then there's one that goes right down here that you don't want to miss. Yeah, this little small one, I yeah. tell you, you get lost. Yeah, you do not want to miss that. That's like the oil passage. And then what would you say you used to hold it on there? So I use a little, uh, it's a Quicksilver bellows adhesive. Yeah. Uh, I just put a little bit in here, hold, helps hold this in place. So when you're putting the two halves together, it doesn't, you know, move out of the way on you. So I'm going to put a little bit of that in there. Uh, if you guys can see, I put a little bellow, has, bellow adhesive in there. That's just going to hold this gasket like I ain't got to worry about it. Yeah, you don't want it shifting or disappearing as you're trying to piece the two halves together. That looks beautiful. I love it. Okay, just let that set. We're gonna put the other two gaskets on. You're gonna have you're gonna have this one that comes in the kit that goes over the shaft and seals down here. So we're gonna get a little. Uh, uh, I'm gonna put a little bit of assembly glue on there just just to make my life a little easier. Just a little. It'll slide down with it. We're gonna put this gasket on. That one just goes right like that. Then of course you got your one that goes here on the groove, but what we're, I'm gonna clean out these uh, 
the teeth on the shaft while I'm here. It's a good time to do it. You can see ours are a little bit dirty. All right, we just got a nylon brush here. We're just making sure that these are cleaned out. We don't want no cruddy dirt in there. Plus, we'll we'll probably grease this up along with the top half where this slides in. We'll grease them both up so they slide into one another. This is one of the ways you could tell a MR1 pre-alpha or the alpha is this pin. All the ones later after this don't have the pin. The nipple. Yeah. All right, we got that pretty cleaned out. And we're just gonna put this old ring on. Like I said, I just keep using the assembly loop. Just makes it that much easier to slide on. That. And we're gonna put a little grease in the top half, and then we're gonna make the two together. All right, everybody, so we took the time to grease a lot of these parts, so when we actually place it on there, it'll nice smoothly go on instead of any uh, mishaps. Don't forget about your gear selector thing in the back. You want to grease that up also. So now's the time we're going to bring the top half off and put it down. Good time to have a helper so you can make sure that brass pipe, or excuse me, the copper pipe goes down in the guide tube, and everything lines up nicely, and the two halves go together good. So we got this in position, everybody. Uh, one thing that we want to mention, we, we hope we're right, I guess, or just, we'll, I guess we'll find out in time. There is a little gap until we tighten it. We did take it off and put it back on just to make sure everything was lining up. We didn't see any problems, so I'm pretty much assuming that it's going to have that little gap until we start to tighten the bolts. One, two, one on the other side. One here. Well, this is going to be for that trim tab thing. That and then the two, what, two underneath? And then there's two underneath, yeah. Yeah, so once we get those, hopefully it closes Close down nicely. Uh, just remember, before you get it down all the way, you might have to lift up to get these side ones started. Yeah. Because the, the stud goes up there so high, the nut won't fit above it. So you're going to have to lift a little. Yeah, easy, easier with another person. Just, just a side note. Well, there you have it, guys. Another project successfully done. Well, at least the first half of that project. Yeah, part one. So make sure you uh, follow along so you can see part two, which should be out, what, next week? Depending on the weather, because we're painting. Well, it could be by the end of the week. Yeah, who, who knows? We'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll go with it. We'll play it by ear. Yeah, we're going to sand this down to smooth and then uh, prime it with the sub etching primer, put the mercury paint on it, so it'll look brand new. Yeah. It was a fun project, though. Marketplace project. Marketplace project. See, so you guys, if you're interested... For a marketplace project series, just drop in the comment section and let us know. Because people sell some crazy stuff on the marketplace. Yeah, if we catch the right deal, we pick it up, rebuild it, fix it, save it, whatever we can do with it, flip it. I don't know, but it'll be fun to do. So make sure you hit that like button, guys. We appreciate it. Hopefully this video helped maybe somebody that was restoring one of these. or As long as we're helping one person, it's worth it to us. Or wanted to change their impeller water pump setup in there. A lot of people need to do that. They, they kind of neglect that. Uh, if you have any questions, be sure to drop them in the comment section. We'll try to get back to them as fast as we can. I know I do. <laughs> yeah, everyone gets answered at this point because we're not we're not big enough. We're not that. huge. But with your help, we can be. Click that subscribe button. We appreciate it. Make sure you hit that little bell notification so you'll see when part two comes up so you are the first to watch it. I know we said that a couple times, but we want to remind you guys. Yeah, we want to just make sure you got it. <laughs> I think that's everything. For yeah, anything we use for this, we'll leave in the comment or in the... Uh, yeah, the comments, not the comment section. The description. the description down below of all the stuff we used in this, in case you're looking for the same thing, that upper piece, the water pump, whatever. We'll leave it down there for you. So until next time, guys, try something new. Do a little bit of everything.